pregnant, I decided no more hospital birth and changed my mind to a home birth. So why did I decide this, especially so late in the game? You're probably like me at this point if you found this video wondering what's the difference between a hospital birth and a home birth and why would I choose one over the other? So here they are. Uh, my name's Nicole, I'm a physical therapist and a mama and I'm gonna share the differences that I found between a hospital birth and a home birth. My first birth was actually at a hospital. My second birth, as I already, spoiler alert, told you, was at home. So why did I choose to do one over the other and what was different about them? One of the first big things that's different between a hospital birth and a home birth is deciding when to go to the hospital. So with um, my hospital birth, it was a little bit of an interesting experience because I was supposed to be induced because I was 10 days late uh, when I finally went in and they needed things to get moving so they were going to induce me. You can check out my actual birth story if you want to see what actually ended up happening, um, but I didn't actually need Pitocin, so very thankful for that because I've heard that is a very intense experience. So I didn't actually have to decide like when to go to the hospital for my first birth because I was scheduled to be induced, but I had planned before that induction to labor at home as long as possible. I didn't want the transition to interrupt my labor or slow my labor or um, I, I just wanted to be at home where I was very comfortable for as long as possible. Now my sister had an experience where she almost had her baby in the car and probably if it wouldn't have been her first baby, she might have because she labored at home just a little bit too long. So when exactly do you go to the hospital? That's a hard decision to make. Um, the thing with the home birth is you really don't have to decide. You do have to decide when to call the midwives and when to have them come if you are planning on having a midwife to support you during your birth. However, if they get there early and they're just like hanging out in your living room and you're laboring in your bedroom, it really didn't disrupt your labor at all. So there are people then they're looking at you kind of, but it's definitely not a huge transition that has to take place. They just come to you and when you're ready, you go ahead and have the baby. Another thing that I thought was a lot different with the home birth versus the hospital birth was the monitoring. So when you get to the hospital to have your baby, um, especially if you're going there with induction, they automatically put that monitor on your belly and they're listening to baby's heartbeat uh, for like a stretch of probably at least 20 minutes. A lot of times they will actually leave that monitor on you and you just take it off when you need to go to the bathroom. Some hospitals do have uh, fetal monitoring that you can walk around with. You can even wear in, in the shower if you decide to labor in the shower at all. But it's a lot more frequent than a home birth. So with a home birth, all they have is the little tool that they might use at your like OB or midwife appointments before you actually go into labor. They just put that little um, head there and they have the little machine and it listens for your baby's heartbeat. My midwife did this when they first got there and then as we were kind of in the pushing phase, I think she did it once, maybe twice, and it was for about a minute. Once she got about a minute of hearing the baby's heartbeat, everything was fine, then they put it away and I didn't have to have something attached to me that was a little bit restricting um, during labor, which was really nice, I thought. Something that the hospital has that your home doesn't have is an adjustable bed. So when you think about that hospital bed that the head can go up, you can raise the height of it or lower the height of it, your bed at home obviously, well most likely doesn't do a lot of those things. It doesn't have a bed rail and things like that. Um, you can hear my husband's side of the story about why he thinks a bed rail is so important and why he became the bed rail um, in his side of our home birth story of above. But um, you do want to make sure you have lots of pillows, maybe an exercise ball, uh, and lots of support people available to help you uh, if you don't have access to a hospital bed that's going to adjust. Because maybe you were thinking you were going to kneel and lean over the end of the hospital bed. Well, if you are in your bed at home, that probably isn't an option. So just think about that in advance, and especially when you're thinking about positions that you might want to labor in. Something a little more silly that is true, but you might not think is a big deal, but I thought was kind of a big deal, was meals. So I'm always thinking about food. <laughs> and one thing that's different is when you are, there's goods and bads, I guess. So if you're at home, you can eat or drink whatever you want. Um, and a lot of midwives would definitely support the fact that eating during labor is really good. It keeps your energy up. And there's a lot of benefits of taking in calories during your labor and drinking plenty of fluids. Um, so that's good about being home. However, 
you do not have someone bringing you a meal after you give birth. So at the hospital, the first thing that I wanted to do after having my first son was I couldn't wait to order my French toast and bacon and fruit and just everything. I was so, so hungry. And my husband was too. However, when you were at home, that service isn't really available to you. Maybe you have family that's planning to bring you a meal. I had my sister at my birth and she made us French toast after, keeping the tradition alive there. Um, and actually earlier in the day when I was laboring, but at home and I was still feeling pretty good, I made enchiladas, which we ate for lunch, which obviously I wasn't nauseous during my labor or that would have never happened. <laughs> um, but I made a big pan of them and then my husband could eat those for leftovers later after the birth. So. It's hard to plan ahead with the home birth because you don't know exactly when you're going to go into labor. So, you know, do you have something in the fridge at all times? Or what if you made it and then you actually go 10 days late? Happened to me. Um, that food is no longer good. But just trying to have things available even in the freezer that you can take out when you do go into labor and then they will be ready to just heat up after you have the baby. is That's probably something to think about and a good idea. So another thing that's different between the hospital and your home is temperature regulation. Um, so at your home, you got to think about, do you have air conditioning? How warm do you keep your house? Um, do you have fans readily available? A hospital is a pretty predictable temperature, right? They keep it that way to keep it very comfortable, hopefully, unless it's a really old hospital and then maybe not. But hopefully your hospital has lots of good amenities and so they can really adjust the temperature very easily. They have hot blankets and a warmer there that they can get for you. At home, you don't have all that. So, you know, something that is a factor for moms is, is what if I don't have AC and I'm supposed to deliver in July? Your temperature definitely fluctuates during labor. I know I went from hot to cold. So what we did to prepare for that is we just had lots of blankets and a sweatshirt that they would just like throw over me between contractions and then during contractions I kicked them off because I was really hot. So have, again, lots of supplies such as blankets available to help with temperature variations that you might experience during labor. Something else to think about is the availability of ice and heat. Afterwards, you're gonna want ice probably. I also liked a lot of heat afterwards because I was having just the worst cramping and they took one of those um, refillable ice packs and they actually put hot water from like, I think their coffee pot or something in it. And I would put that on my belly and it really helped with the after cramping. I didn't have that at home. So we had to, um, we had purchased some like little pads that you could stick on, you know, like those little warmers that you put in your shoes or your mittens in the winter, something like that. Um, but for your belly, so that could help with cramping. We had a gel ice pack in the freezer on standby and we actually did um, buy some of the ice packs that you can stick in your underwear for healing afterwards. So just knowing that those things aren't gonna be provided for you if you do have a home birth, not a deal breaker, you just need to plan in advance. Good old bundle massages. These are something else that is happens a lot at the hospital. Depending on where you are, I know some hospitals even come in like every 15 minutes right after labor to push on your uterus, um, which doesn't sound that bad until you've just given birth and then it hurts like the dickens, I'm here to tell you. Um, but anyway, so you still need to do those if you had a home birth, but you are responsible for doing them. So make sure that you ask your midmoy for OBGYN in advance or after you have the baby, like, what exactly do I need to do? Because I know for me it was something that I just completely didn't even think about. And after the birth, they told me like, oh, massage your uterus and make sure that it's hard. But they probably gave me more details than that. But just in the adrenaline and the hormones, I just didn't think of it. So I ended up having to <laughs> look at my paperwork later. Okay, what exactly am I supposed to be doing? What's normal? Of course, my midwives were open to me texting them and asking questions. And so I did that. But just know there's not going to be a nurse reminding you to do that. Uh, so you're going to have to know how and force yourself to do those afterwards on your own. Another thing is car seats. So a lot of hospitals now have people that are certified in putting in car seats safely. So if this is your first baby especially and you were, you're not exactly sure how to install your car seat properly, this is something that's really nice that the hospital offers. They come, they even came to our room with our first birth and they made sure our son was in tight, showed dad how to, you know, what's tight, not, you know, not too tight, but not too loose and went out to the car with them and yep, everything's installed right. This is how tight you want it and things like that. We did not have that option at a home birth. Uh, thankfully it was our second. So we were pretty, pretty familiar with our car seats, 
But do know that a lot of like police stations, fire stations sometimes, or you might even be able to go to a lo local hospital and say, hey, I'm gonna have a home birth, do you offer this service? Um, and you could probably have someone double check that for you. Cause you do wanna make sure when you are ready to go out and about that, you are going to be traveling as safe as possible with your baby because there is no cargo that is more precious than your baby. On the plus side of not being at the hospital, two car rides that you don't have to endure. First of all, the car ride to the hospital, which if you're planning on laboring at home, um, in, once you've experienced contractions, you'll know what I mean here, having to ride in the car with intense contractions is is hell, really, um, <laughs> because you really don't want to move. I know for me, I just like everything very still. Like even at the end, I didn't even want the TV on. Like we would pause the show we were watching because just that stimulus of that sound was like, it was too much with the intensity of the contractions. So going on a car ride like that is, is pretty bad. So if you're planning on laboring at home, you don't have to do that car ride, which is amazing. And then also if you have a, a longer car ride, sometimes sitting in a car to go home is pretty uncomfortable, especially if you've had any amount of tearing or you've had an episiotomy, a C-section, things can be pretty uncomfortable. So just make sure that you are considering that um, and have lots of maybe pillows available or you might even have to make some stops on the way home from the hospital if you do go with a hospital birth and you do have like perineal trauma that is going to be uncomfortable for you. Which, just a shameless plug here, if you are experiencing any trauma from a C-section, a perineal tearing, or an episiotomy, please, please, please check out this link in the comments and in the description below about my course that I talk a lot about things that are so essential when you are healing from those kind of things. A lot of people think, oh, just like with time, it'll get better. Maybe, but it would take a lot, a lot of time. And even then, sometimes intercourse and it is still a problem for you. Um, sometimes you still have pain in your abdomen from scar tissue after C-sections and things like that. So check that out or schedule like a one-on-one -on -one 15 minute consultation with me. Those 15 minute ones are free right now. So please utilize that resource because it can be pretty uncomfortable after, after trauma happens during birth. Another perk of a home birth is that you don't have to, have to, have to find care for your pets and your children. Um, if you are going to the hospital, then you definitely need to have somewhere for your kids to go. Although I do have a coworker who said they got in a real pinch and her kids went to the hospital with her um, and they were there during her labor, uh, which kudos to her. I don't know if my kids would think the same of me after seeing me in labor, <laughs> but mine are still pretty young. Um, so everyone feels differently about that. But I guess the main thing is that if you are not planning on having your kids with you while you labor, um, and someone is supposed to pick them up, it's a little different if you go, you know, if you're at home, they can be there and you could maybe distract them. But if you're at the hospital, like making that transition into the hospital, especially right now in the time of COVID, like kids wouldn't even be allowed in the hospital. That would not be an option. And so you would have to wait for your caregiver to come and pick up your kids. Um, if you have pets at home, you definitely have to make arrangements for them if you're gonna stay a couple nights at the hospital versus if you are just gonna be at home, you might just put them in their cage for a little bit or in the bathroom or whatever, just so they're not being too much of a nuisance, but they could just stay right there with you. So just another thing to think about there. Something that is huge right now uh, in considering home birth versus hospital birth is exposure to other people and germs. So one of the big reasons why we decided to have a home birth was because it was um, in April here in the United States. We are really uh, dealing pretty heavily with the coronavirus during that time. And so being in the hospital just meant that many more people that my baby was gonna be exposed to. They do switch rooms from like a delivery room to your recovery room. So although there's not a lot of visitors in the hospital, you would still be in the hospital and elevators um, with nursing shift changes. Even if it's only nurses that have been on your unit, I mean, you are exposed to that many more germs. So I know they are being as cautious as possible, but when you have a home birth, um, the midwife and an assistant, if they have an assistant, Basically, they're the only ones that your baby's gonna be exposed to and you know that well in advance. So, something to think about, again, when you're thinking about home births versus hospital births. Along the same lines of the safety checks with your car seat that a lot of hospital staffs have available, lactation consultants are something else that hospitals 
have readily available and most uh, most hospitals will offer, hey, do you want a consult with um, with a lactation consultant? And when you have a home birth, that might not necessarily be something that's included. Uh, a lot of midwives can definitely give you some guidance on that, but just know you might want to look into and have written down some lactation consultants that are willing to do home visits or video visits. Um, just in case you run into that issue with breastfeeding. Uh, the last thing you want is to be scrambling around with a newborn who doesn't want to eat and you're stressed and they're stressed and not have access to a lactation consultant. There are plenty of them that are not associated with hospitals. If you don't know where to start looking, uh, find a local doula company and I guarantee some of them are lactation consultants or they would be able to refer you to lactation consultants in your area. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to say about one of the biggest things I noticed that was different between a home birth and a hospital birth was um, access to epidurals. So this should go without saying, but if you are planning on a home birth, you really need to have some tricks up your sleeve for pain management. So whether that's like pressure, for me, the midwife pushed on my sacrum during contractions and it was like heaven to me. Um, another thing is hip squeezes. This helps a lot of a lot of women through contractions. But getting an epidural is something you would have to be transferred to the hospital for. So you would really end up kind of having half home birth, half hospital birth in that case, which financially didn't really make sense for us. And I know there's probably others out you out there that feel the same way as I did. So just really plan ahead. Have your partner, your doula hire a doula, maybe, <laughs> have your partner very involved with a good birth class that's going to teach you ways to manage pain during a childbirth because getting an epidural when it gets too much is just not, it's not really an option if you plan on staying home. So be prepared for that and plan ahead. Um, I just want to say whatever you decide, hospital birth, home birth, there's pluses and minuses to both of them. I had extreme extremely great staff at both places. Um, my childbirth experience was definitely different. Um, hospital versus home birth. You can check out my home birth story above, link above, uh, if you want to know more about that. But I just want you to know that like kind of what's going to be different and why am I choosing one over the other. Uh, a lot of times along with the epidural you think about there's not access to a surgeon. So a c-section is a little more difficult to get access to, which you might see as a plus or a minus. Um, same goes for other other interventions. So just think about that. And if you are considering a home birth, I loved it. Don't let this video scare you away from it. Hopefully, hopefully it showed you lots of good things about that experience as well. As always, please subscribe to my channel if you are interested in things about birth and postpartum healing. I put out videos pretty much every single week and I love sharing this with other moms. It would help me out tremendously though if you would either give this video a thumbs up or comment anything below to say, hey, I love your video. Uh, it, it helps YouTube show it to more people and we want to share this kind of information with all sorts of moms. So please do one of those things if you can and I can't wait to see you all next week.